All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about making more YouTube thumbnail action for things like gaming. So it's been a while since I played The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for my gaming channel, so I decided today I needed to make a freshened up thumbnail to illustrate that I'm back in action. So to do that, I'm just going to create a standard size thumbnail and use some kind of pre-existing pieces that have been cobbled together either by Nintendo themselves or by the gaming community on places like wikis. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into Photoshop and I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to create a new document that is 1920 by 1080. The standard sizes for thumbnails across most video platforms now are what's called the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and you can Google uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio resolutions, and you'll find things like this, or maybe you'll get uh, 1280 by 720, I believe, is the minimum for YouTube, but I always make my 1920 by 1080 because it's really easy to get large assets anymore to make thumbnails. And then I'm going to set the resolution to about 72 pixels per inch. That's the standard computer screen resolution. And that'll work even with higher resolution or higher density screens that you find on like smartphones and tablets. And we'll just label this Breath of the Wild thumbnail. And click on create. I'll also leave my background transparent. That's just a preference of mine. Color mode is going to be RGB because RGB is for screens. CMYK down here is for printing. And we'll just click on create. So for a lot of my branding purposes, I've got my own background that I've got. It's like a low poly background that I store inside of my Adobe library. And this is nice because it's general purpose. It's abstract. It doesn't look funny when I put it into different mediums. And then I can apply different effects to this later, depending on what I want to do with it. Now, if I go over here to my other web browser, I've got some assets that I was looking for for Breath of the Wild. And this is something that I should probably talk about. When you're using other people's promotional artwork for thumbnails, make sure it's something that would be okay for you to use. These graphics like the Legend of Zelda logo and everything and the characters and the character art that Nintendo created, they probably don't care if you use this to promote a video about Breath of the Wild because this was originally intended to advertise the game anyway. But what you need to be careful of is not using somebody's fan-made artwork because that is something that they created and you might get in trouble for copyright. So just keep that in mind. A lot of companies like Zelda, or not Zelda, a lot of companies like Nintendo, when releasing a game like Zelda, will actually release a press kit of media that people like the news media or like gaming news can use to talk about the game because it provides them with an easy outlet for publicity. So that's just something to keep in mind. I've gone ahead and grabbed things like the Breath of the Wild logo here, and then... Did I save that? Let's save another copy of this, just to be sure. And I'm going to drag and drop this logo from that little download bar into Photoshop and resize it a little bit. So I've got a nice little logo that I can move around and resize depending on what I need. And I'm going to go ahead and create like a funky sort of layout using the evil robots from Breath of the Wild, the guardians that are like magical automatons. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to grab, I believe this is Link, doing his uh, magic arrow shenanigans. And then lastly, I believe I have Link riding the horse Epona, which I just realized when talking to a friend of mine, that you can actually get Epona inside of the game. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start by deciding which one of these characters I want to use to illustrate my picture. Now, I don't know if you can see this here, but there's like a weird little halo of white from the paint stroke around this particular image, so I'm just going to hide that, maybe use this for a different composition later. 
And I'm gonna work on utilizing Link here, doing like a cool arrow trick. And what I think, based upon his position and his shape, I can kind of create like a an abstract shape using him and the logo. So like it looks like the logo is nestled between him and his arrow and the guardian shooting its laser. So to handle this, I'm gonna take the guardian. I'm gonna go up to edit, transform, and I'm gonna flip him along the horizontal axis so he's facing the other direction. It looks like he and Link are going for an epic showdown. And I might even increase his size just a smidgen and push Link up into the corner a little bit. I just want to, I don't really want to clip him off too much, but if he's nestled right up against the edge of the image, that's not going to look too weird. And I'm going to click over here in the side panel in the layers window. This one right here. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, give myself some more room here to work. I'm actually going to take this layer and pull it up in the list because all these layers act like layers of transparent film sitting on top of one another. So the one that's on the very tippy top of this list here, the sidebar, is going to be the one that appears on top of everything else. And so now I'm looking for how do I want to position the Breath of the Wild logo. Do I want it like in here? Do I want it big? Do I want it small? One thing I always, you know, caution people is go err on the side of larger for text for readability because a lot of thumbnails are going to appear to be about this size. So you want, you know, a bit more is more in this case, which I'm sure makes plenty of sense to a lot of people. And if I don't really like this logo, I can go back over here and I can say, like, let's get uh, Breath of the Wild logo PNG. I always search PNG instead of transparent because a lot of PNGs are put up transparent anyway for stuff like logos. Ooh, what is this? That's somebody's custom logo. That looks really neat. If it'll load. Yeah, look at that. That's fancy. I wonder if that's like a special logo for one of the DLCs or if that's just somebody's cool creation. This is a situation where you got to be careful, but if I wanted to, I could take this black and white photo. And then I could save it to my temporary folder. I don't know what the deal is ever since I switched back to using PC to Mac from doing graphics. But it always felt like uh, I always have issues with transparencies turning black or white on me when pulling them directly off of the web into Photoshop, and I'm wondering if there's a way to fix that. I should look. So I like that this is black and white, I do, but I don't like that it doesn't have the sword and instead has that flower. Not that I have anything against flowers, they're quite pretty. But it's only the flowers. So this one has the flower too. So what if I turned this white by hitting Control u to bring up the hue saturation panel and drag this all the way to the side. I really like this better for legibility, especially when it's small. A stark contrast of white goes really, really well. And then I can kind of nestle it so it's sitting on top of the Guardian, and the Z is front and center between the Guardian and Link about to fire an ancient arrow at its face. So I like that. Let's go with some of that. And sometimes it doesn't always work out. Like, let's go over to my videos. This is the one I used to have. I had, like, the Legend of Zelda icon in the top of the screen. And then Link was off to the side, and there was the same Guardian image I used before. That's not bad, I suppose. So let's just keep playing around with this a little bit. Um, maybe Link doesn't look so good over here. Let's, let's flip him around. In fact, let's just hit Control J to duplicate this layer, and we'll just leave Link the original copy of this layer over here. I'm gonna click the eyeball in the Layers panel to hide him so we can't see him anymore. Let's take this new one, let's call this... Right Link, just so I don't lose track of him. And let's go back to Edit, Transform, let's flip him horizontally so he's facing the other direction. This might make for a slightly better composition anyway. And we'll nestle him up in the top corner. And we might not even need this guardian down here that I'm going to duplicate as well. We could completely just nix him entirely. And maybe this looks better with just Link. Just one large pointy-eared fella 
in the corner, about to blast an arrow. And then we can go over here, drag the logo up, make it bigger. Breath of the Wild, do do do. And this is actually looking pretty good, to be honest with you. Like, I like this a little better. Just sometimes simple is better. A lot of people, including myself, will make like this really badass montage and it just, it completely wastes time or it just looks too busy and, and just defeats the purpose of what you're trying to get across. So this is my 16th video, so let's see what this looks like when I throw on some text. So, to get the text out, I'm gonna hit T to bring up the text tool. You can find it right here. It's in with all the other text tools. It just looks like a big letter T. And then that'll bring up a little menu at the top of the screen here. I want to turn this text white. I want to use OnRamp, which is a font that I purchased as a font to use with my own branding on YouTube. I love OnRamp. It's great stuff. It's made by the Lost Type people. I'm going to put down number 16. I'm going to hit Control T to make it big. And where do we want to nestle the number a little bit? Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a similar composition. So I'm actually going to rotate the text a little bit. I want to make it look like we're making like a crook that the the lettering, or not the lettering, the number can sit in for our series. So this is pretty good, actually. This one's not bad. I kind of like this. Maybe we'll unrotate the logo a little bit. And something else I think I should note about text is that text is actually not something you have to worry about getting all pixelated, no matter how small or how huge you make it, because text is being generated as a vector file or a vector format inside of the computer, which means all of these lines are going to be nice and crisp and generated by math, no matter how big or how small you make it. That's one of the reasons why people really like using programs like Adobe Illustrator in order to create things, because all of the artwork created in Adobe Illustrator is all vector artwork, which means that it scales wonderfully no matter what you do to it or how you abuse it. So this will be the Breath of the Wild. Links over here. I think I might want to do some stuff with my background. So let's duplicate the background. Right click it and rasterize it because it's currently a smart object and I just don't want to deal with that right now. And then let's see, how do I want to colorize this? I could just hit Control U, colorize, and I could look to create this kind of bluish, dark gray blue background that Link has behind him. So everything kind of blends together. Or I could go for an alternate layout and do like the opposite. So if I look up color wheel, the opposite of blue is an orange. So we're going to try to go for an orangey color. And that'll be a nice contrast, I think. We can bump up the saturation a little bit to make the colors more vibrant so we can see a little better. How do we like that? Are we feeling that? Maybe, maybe not. We could also create like a gradient if I duplicate this again. I can turn this into another color, a slightly similar looking color, like a red. And then I can hit this little button down here. It looks like a square with a hole in it to mask this layer. And this will allow me to naturally blend together these two layers as if one of them was transparent to create a, like a lazy gradient if I want. Just gives me some options to play with it, to mess around with it. I don't know. I kind of like the vibrance of my other wallpaper because it kind of says to me like this is the Chupacabra's lair, that's Larry's background, and it's good for branding purposes. So I might roll with this. I might play with it some more. I think a lot of people, and again, myself included, we all kind of get caught up in making the perfect thumbnail, the perfect logo, the perfect whatever. As long as it says Breath of the Wild and has the link on it, I think it'll do the job just fine. So now I think what we'll do is we'll add a little depth to it by throwing in a couple drop shadows so it looks like these things are actual physical objects sitting in space. So I'll just double click the layer like I just did and then I'll click on the drop shadow at the bottom. And these are nice because you can literally click and drag the shadow around in the newer versions of Photoshop. 
I can increase how big the shadow is, how far it spreads. The less it spreads, the less of like a hard line it is, so I usually leave that low. And then you can determine how far away from the object it is, how how you know visible it is, if it's got full opacity, if it's slightly faded. I like that. That's good. It just adds a smidgen of depth to that. And not everyone will notice that. That's fine. It's not really our goal. It's just however happy this makes us with our own image by adding just a smidgen of depth to everything. So if someone really takes a good hard look at it, they can say, you know what, that's pretty good. I like that little shadow effect. And if we were having trouble reading this text because it was on like a busy background with a lot of white in it, you could also go ahead, double click this and give it a stroke. Not like an embolism in the brain, but it gives a little black outline that allows it to be easier read when you zoom out. It adds like a distinct line of contrast. Just depends on what the composition looks like. Always zoom out and if you can't read something, that's when you might need to add a stroke. But this is looking pretty good. I'll leave this. This will be my new template for Breath of the Wild. And that'll be it, really. Now I can just go through and like change this to a 17 for the next episode. And I'm good to go for a while until I decide to change it once again. So that's just kind of a look at the logic behind making your own thumbnails for games on YouTube and other places. I'll be making some more thumbnail videos in the future just because I've made different thumbnails for different reasons with different concepts and subject matter. So I feel like it might be interesting for people to take a look at that because half of making stuff in Photoshop is knowing how Photoshop works. And the part that I always struggled with was like the why would you do that? When would you do that? And how do you put it all together in your head? So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. This has been more Photoshop tutorial stuff. I'll catch you next time. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe. Ask me some questions. I'm always happy to help. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.